Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about hypothesis tests for proportions. So remember our symbol for population proportion. So basically you want to apply the principles that we learned in the previous lecture on hypothesis tests, specifically to proportions. If you're following along in the text, it's section 10.3. But if you're using any other textbook, just look for a single sample hypothesis test for proportion and adjust accordingly. Okay? So, we spent a good deal of time discussing the concept of hypothesis tests, how they're used, the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis. We defined some important terms like test statistics and p values, and we also talked about the decisions that are possible when doing a hypothesis test, rejecting the null, failing to reject the null, etc. Okay, so now we're going to actually apply this to a single sample hypothesis test specifically for proportion. So what you need to consider here is that we can only apply this type of test to what we're going to call large samples. So I'm going to put that in quotes because that's going to mean different things in different types of hypothesis tests. It's not the most technically correct terminology to use. We should use asymptotic hypothesis tests for proportion. But here, what I mean specifically boils down to this first bullet. That is, we need this condition to be satisfied and this condition to be satisfied before we do any of the hypothesis testing that we're going to do in this lecture. Okay, so what is this condition? Let's pay attention to this and check this every time. So we want to check that that sample size times the proportion under the null hypothesis, I've defined p, p naught here, is greater than or equal to 10 and the proportion sorry, the sample size times 1 minus the proportion under the null hypothesis is greater than or equal to 10. So if both of these check out, we've satisfied this large sam sample or asymptotic condition, okay? At least as per our textbook. Other textbooks have a more stringent um, uh, test for this of 20, and some have a more relaxed test of 5. But we're going to stick with 10 for our purposes. Okay, now once these both check out, we can go ahead and compute the test statistic. And our test statistic for this type of hypothesis test is going to be a Z test statistic as follows. The sample proportion, p hat, minus the null value for proportion. Remember, that's the value under the null hypothesis. So whatever the null hypothesis says about p, right, that is what we're calling p naught for now. This will get replaced by an actual value, okay? Zero to one, obviously, because it's going to be a proportion. And that's what we're going to be plugging in here, as well as in the denominator, okay? So that's the computation of the test statistic. And under the large sample condition, this guy will follow a standard normal distribution, which will allow us to use the z-tables to answer any kind of questions about probability. And we're going to need to because our next step is going to be to compute p-values. And you remember what a p-value is. So pause and refresh this if you forgot what this was. This is a very important concept in hypothesis testing. If you missed that lecture, go back and watch the lecture on Intro to Hypothesis Testing. It's a three-part lecture, okay? Coming back here, we're going to actually compute a p-value and then compare that p-value to a level of significance. If it's a less than or equal to the level of significance, we know our decision will be to reject the null. If it's greater than, the level of significance will fail to reject, okay? Now, before we do an example, so this is the first example we're going to work on. One other thing I want to remind you of were the three alternative forms for these initial set of hypothesis tests that we're going to do. And those were on also on the previous lecture. 
either not equal to, greater than, or less than. You need to be very careful, as I said back then, on which of these you're going to choose for the alternative hypothesis because that's going to make a difference between a one-sided or one-tailed test and a two-sided or two-tailed test. And that's going to affect your computation of the p-value. Okay, so again, go back and watch that intro to a hypothesis test lecture uh, if you missed that because I talk about that stuff at length. Okay, now coming back to our rule, okay, it was simply an application of the p-value to make our final decision. Let's look at an example. Let's look through this, and what I want to formulate with you is simply the null and the alternative, and then I have the answer written out, worked out on the next slide, which you can pause and look at as you work on it yourself first. Okay, so nationwide, 58% of high school graduates go on to attend college. We sample 1,500 of these. Uh, not these, but sorry, of California high school graduates, and determined that 55% were going to go to college. Okay, Is the college attendance proportion in California different? Very important term. From the national? Test at 1% level of significance. Okay, we got a lot of important numbers here. Let me pull those out. First off, N, right? Here's P hat. That's the proportion from the 1,500 that were attending college. Here's alpha. And here is a clear indication of our alternative hypothesis being not equal to. Okay. Now, how do I even know this is a hypothesis test? Well, because we're asked a question that needs an answer of this way or that way, a binary answer, a yes or no, an accept or reject. Is the college attendance proportion in California different? That's a question that needs an answer of yes or no. So hypothesis test is ideal here because we're trying to make a decision to go one way or the other based on partial information, i.e. a sample. So clearly we're comparing, we're, we're interested in proportion here. That's the parameter in question. So let me just set that much up, okay? And the alternative we've determined is not equal to. Spend a good amount of time to confirm that this is the alternative you need. And your test is, read the question, is the college attendance proportion in California different from the national? Here's the national. We're quoted that. So that is the hypothesized value that we're testing against. And so the null, since I'm going to keep with the convention of keeping it a simple statement, is always going to be equal to. So here is our hypothesis test, and if we want to be complete, let's also state the level of significance, which is very important. There it is. Those are the hypothesis statements that I need to make to conduct this test. Okay? Now, one by one, you need to determine what parameter are we testing, what's the hypothesized value, what's the alternative, what's the level of significance. Once you have this set up, then you can proceed to actually do the test, which means compute, check if you have a large sample condition satisfied. So here's our value for P0, by the way. Okay, so in that formula I showed you on the previous slide, that would be the null value of the proportion, so or the, the, the value of the proportion under the null hypothesis assumption. Okay, and there's clearly P hat. All right, and then you compute your test statistic after you've confirmed you have a large sample, um, and then you compute a p-value. So I'm going to give you a chance to work on this. You can pause this, and here you can confirm your answer and your work. Okay, so as you can see here, I got everything worked out with explanations. Just one thing I want to focus on, since this was a not equal to alternative, this becomes a two-sided test, which means when you compute the p-value, you need to do this extra step here, which is multiply the tail probability by two. Okay, so the tail probability here was 0 0.0093 because the z test statistic was negative 2.35. You multiply that by 2, and then you call that the p-value, okay, 0 
that is clearly greater than alpha, which was set at 0 0.01, so we failed to reject. There was not enough evidence to conclude that the proportion in California was different than the national. That's the conclusion. Okay? So listen to this back as many times as you need. As you can see, I checked the large sample condition after I made the statements. Then I computed the test statistic. That's what TS stands for. Then I took the test statistic and I got the tail probability under the Z distribution, right, which is the appropriate distribution for, for reasons we discussed on the previous slide. But then before I called this the p-value, I needed to multiply this by 2 because it's a two-sided test because of this alternative. Now, if this alternative was one of these, then this would be a one-sided test, and you would not do this step. Everything else would be identical, but you would not multiply it by 2. This would be your p-value, and then you would compare that to alpha. Okay? Now let's go on to another example. So take a second, pause, try this. Okay, I'm assuming you gave this a shot. Now let's go ahead and formulate the statements, the null hypothesis. Well, it seems, again, we're talking about the proportion here. Even though the word doesn't come up, I think, we're talking about uh, the, the fraction or, or proportion of people in a, t in a county that uh, reduce their water consumption. So, and we're asked the clear question that needs an answer. Is there fewer than half, or did fewer than half households reduce their water consumption? So fewer than half means my alternative is going to be less than 0.5 or 1 half. Okay? And we keep the null a simple statement. So my convention, if you're using a text that uh, doesn't mind, um, this would also greater than or equal to would also suffice in the null. Okay, it's uh, the same type of test. Again, we're testing at one percent level of significance. We have our p hat here. We have n, and fewer than half tells me this. That's the test, right? And fewer than half, right? So I have a one-sided test. Okay, then take your time and get this right. Once you get this right, you go through the motions, okay, which I've outlined here clearly. You test the large sample condition. They both check out. You compute the test statistic, negative 2.68. Notice here I get the tail probability from the Z distribution. P-value is always going to be a tail probability. Okay, the question you need to ask is, do I need to multiply this by 2 or not? And to answer that question, you go back to the alternative. If the alternative is one-sided, because it's less than or it's greater than, then you do not need to do that step. Okay, so notice I take this value as my p-value. I compare that to alpha. It's less than alpha, so I reject the null hypothesis. There is significant evidence that fewer than half households uh, reduced water consumption, if you want to put a statement to it, okay? All right, so this was single sample hypothesis tests for the proportion. I hope this was helpful, and this is building on our hypothesis testing unit. I'm going to continue making more of these um, for different applications, okay? Have a great day.